Hello, everyone. Hope you are well on this Monday night. We got Monday out of the way, y'all. That's one thing, okay? We, we, can, we can say that, right? I'm going to cover a couple of things that are probably going to piss you off. Not, I don't think that's going to scare you, but it's going to make you mad. Probably more pissed off than you already are at some things that are going on. But uh, I will go into it, and maybe one or two of these things you're not aware of yet, all right? But first, real quick, oh, and I got a good verse I'm going to share, a good passage that uh, packs a punch, packs a punch, okay? So stay tuned for the passage, all right? First, though, I was, when I went into work this morning, I got out of my truck, I'm walking in, walking across the parking lot, I park in the way back. Uh, as far as I can park part of the parking lot. So it forces my big self to walk uh, a few more steps to uh, get in the building, right? Same thing you know, when you come back out. But anyway, uh, a young lady, as I was getting closer to the building, a young lady approached me and I didn't recognize her. She was professionally dressed and she walked up to me and she said, excuse me, sir, I, I can you point me in the right direction? I, I need to refill some medications for my ADHD issue because I'm really, I'm really struggling lately and I'm, I fear that I may not make it through real estate school. And she had a look of worry. She had a look of anxiety on her. And uh, I said, yeah, yeah, come on. I'll show you where to go to, uh, she probably has, I said, how long have you had services from us before? And she says, yeah, but it's been two, three years. I said, probably need to get re-registered and they probably want to sit down with you and talk with you. So I showed her where to go and, and got her in the right area. I just hope she got what she needed, but you, just so, you know, we don't know, you know, how people, a lot of times people will, will look like they have it all together. They'll be put together and have the smile, the look and all that. And you just don't know what people are dealing with inside, you know, and, and you, well, many of you know what I'm talking about, you know. So let's keep that in mind when we're out and about and we're interacting with folks, okay? I saw this story. Uh, this happened over the weekend. Some of these things happen on the weekend and slide by people. Uh, but this article got my attention. It said the United States... Well, it is said that the United States is directly at war with Moscow right now. Now, this is coming from the Russian foreign minister, Mr. Lavrov. Uh, now, he was at a, uh, this was on Saturday, uh, during the General Assembly of the United Nations uh, Assembly in New York. And he made some remarks, and they were asking him about the proxy war that's just still going on in the Ukraine, of course. And he made some interesting comments now, y'all. This is the foreign minister of Russia. He said uh, they are directly engaged in hostilities with us, talking about the United States, uh, using the Ukrainian forces, uh, using the Ukrainians as fodder. They are waging war with us, talking about the United States again. They are there are deliveries of more and more volumes of quantities of weapons. Lavrov said. Lavrov. Lavrov pointed to the billions of dollars worth of weapons provided to Ukraine, as well as the training to Ukrainian military instructors in Poland, Germany, and the United Kingdom as evidence of United States involvement in the war. Now, he said, United States British reconnaissance planes are not only working to identify objectives and targets, but are showing where our anti-air defenses are working. So next time they could help, Lavrov said. So you can call this whatever you want to call it, but they are directly at war with us. We call it the hybrid war, but it doesn't change reality. I'm telling you folks, y'all that, you know, and I have struggled with, with trying to understand what's really going on over there in this war. I know many of you have, have said this too, and you probably are as well. There are times when, I don't believe anything that's coming out of there, like who's winning. You know, sometimes you hear that the Russians are, are, are wiping them out. I, sometimes you hear the total opposite, you know, that Ukrainians are winning and gaining ground and all this stuff. Who knows? Who knows, really? But it's still going on, apparently. On the other hand, there are times, so sometimes I just don't worry about it as much, but then there are times when, 
My concern is we're going to wake up one morning and all hell is going to have broke loose. And WW3 will have erupted big time, real time. So those are my two conflicting thoughts there and my, my concerns. You know, share your thoughts on that one. But prepare not to be in shock. Prepare not to be caught off guard with this. Because it could one morning when we wake up, all right? Those who are not prepared or not thought about this, they're going to panic. They're going to freak out. They're going to run to the stores. And it will be on, y'all. It will be on like Donkey Kong. Like Donkey Kong. All right, I'm shifting gears. You know I got to mention at least something about the border, but the saying now, maybe I mentioned this number, but 10,000, 10,000 per day are coming through Texas. Eagle Pass is the big one they're, they're talking about. But think about 10,000 per day, y'all. Do the math. I mean, that's scary. It's very scary. Now, if you're really ready to be mad, uh, did you realize, and maybe some of y'all do, do you realize that your tax your tax uh, money, us as taxpayers, we are paying for many employees' salaries in the Ukraine. Ukraine, we're covering the salaries for 57,000 first responders there. This is on a 60 Minutes thing story just recently 57,000 first responders we're paying their salaries y'all probably benefits no telling what else 20 they said that 25 billion dollars has been spent has been given to Ukraine in non-military aid just the non-military 25 billion while at the same time we have crushing inflation energy prices here we're about to go into a winter a government shutdown looms, a possible government shutdown looms. Oh, by the way, if they said, I saw this today, if the government does some, for some reason shut down, it probably won't. But if it does, the Ukraine aid that we've been sending is exempt from all that. We can still do that. We can still send billions, but the government's going to shut down. So you may have government employees not being paid, but we're going to still keep paying for employees in the Ukraine. I'm trying hard not to uh, uh, use extremely foul language right now, okay? When I read all this, it, it, it got me all worked up, and just saying it is, is doing the same thing. It's unreal. At the same time, we have over $33 trillion deficit going on and counting. So a while ago, the United States government debt rose to $33.1 trillion. This is an increase of $100 billion in just five days, y'all. Think about that. $100 billion in five days and $1 trillion in the last 90 days. Y'all, it's way worse than people think. Do, do most people even know, I mean, pay attention to this? Do they care? As long as they have their their things, their devices, their their phones, their cars, that they're probably up to their debt, up to their eyeballs in debt with. I mean, I mean, I'm perplexed. Sometimes I just don't have the words. I mean, I don't get it. I mean, and so, and and so. My, the three things I'm really concerned with, right, I, I, you know, not in any particular order, I guess, but the, the potential for WW3 to go big time, uh, the invasion from the South, and this crushing inflation, which is not going away. It's not going away, y'all. Go to the grocery store, and you, you see that, right? Go anywhere, pretty, pretty much. Go anywhere to have to spend money whether it's an appliance, whether it's food, whether it's getting something done, work done to your car, or heaven forbid you got to buy a car. Oh my goodness. Don't even get me started on that one. I don't, any, anyway. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to talk, uh, I'm going to read a passage here that is a good one. A good one. Okay. 
So they're all good, you know, they're all all good. But this one uh, is one I haven't read in a while. I hadn't really come across it. But uh, Matthew, I've been in Matthew for a while, haven't I? I've been in that book for a while here with y'all. Uh, Matthew chapter 23, the first, uh, and, and a lot of this uh, is the seven woes to the scribes and the Pharisees. And Jesus, you know, he spends a lot of time talking about people uh, who preach, who pr don't practice, excuse me, don't practice what they preach. So this is something we need to keep in mind. You know, we're all human. We all have those moments, you know, where we, where we fall, we all fall short, of course. But I think we need to really pay close attention to uh, really uh, walk in what we talk, you know, so to speak. So he says, uh, this is chapter 23, starting with verse 1. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do. For they preach, but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and they lay them on people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. So they're doing this. He says, you Pharisees, you're doing this, but you're not doing anything else, right? You're not, you're not taking any action. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love the place of honor and feasts and the best seats in the synagogues and greetings and the marketplaces and being called rabbi by others. Remind you of other people, huh? But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you and you are all brothers, and call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Amen. Uh, could spend a year breaking that down but uh anyway he was saying practice what you preach dudes you know and he really <laughs> lays into the pharisees a bunch but uh you know when i read that I, I it makes me think of not necessarily uh well partly i guess uh the the, the fake pastors out there the fake the fake um televangelists and all that kind of stuff but other other people in, in positions of power not just religious, but other other points of power, uh, very similar. The scribes are like is just like you know you could come in here and say this today, and it just applies. It's amazing, right? So share your thoughts on that. Let's keep this in mind. Hope it was helpful. And the dogs are coming in. All right, they're late today. All right, well let's uh, let's be safe out there. Keep preparing. God bless you. I will see you soon.